Canada has pledged $500 million in additional military aid to Ukraine as part of a comprehensive support package agreed upon at the NATO summit, a move the United States described as providing Ukraine with a well-lit bridge towards alliance membership. A senior Canadian government official confirmed at the North Atlantic Treaty Organization summit on July 10th that the funds will be disbursed over the next year. Additionally, Canada will assume command of a NATO training program designed to instruct Ukrainian pilots on operating newly delivered F-16 fighter jets. This announcement follows an impassioned appeal from Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky for increased support to counter the Russian invasion. With the potential return of former US President Donald Trump, known for his isolationist policies looming in the upcoming US presidential election, Zelensky called on NATO members to step out of the shadows and make stronger decisions before the November vote. Even, even the anniversary NATO summit, which should become a top event, does not indeed look strong in the media in contrast to what is expected from November. It seems that people do not even notice that NATO has expanded by two new countries at once. And this is a historic event, but it is in the shadows of another story. It's time to sit out, to step out of the shadows, to make strong decisions work, to act and not to wait for November or any other month to this end. We must be strong and uncompromising altogether. Canada's commitment is part of a larger $59 billion aid package pledged by NATO's 32 members, which the White House stated would be delivered within the next year. NATO Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg had earlier indicated that he hoped to secure an annual commitment of similar magnitude for Ukraine, describing the current package as a minimum baseline for this year. The aid levels will be reassessed at the next NATO meeting in 2025. We have agreed that 40 billion euros is a minimum baseline within the next year and to ensure sustainable funding for Ukraine to prevail. We also agreed to review this at our summit in 2025, not least to ensure it continues to meet Ukraine's needs. We are not doing this uh, because we want to prolong a war. We are doing this because we want to end the war as soon as possible. The quickest way to end the war is to lose the war. But that would not bring peace. It will only bring occupation. So unless we want Ukraine to lose, unless we want to bow uh, to Putin, we need to show commitment and resolve. Canada has faced criticism for not meeting NATO's benchmark for defence spending, which stipulates that member nations allocate at least 2% of their gross domestic product, GDP, to military expenditures. Today, we decided to adapt NATO's command structure, improve our integrated air and missile defense systems, and to go further to match our defense plans with the necessary capabilities. All of this has, has been made possible by historic increases in defense investment across the alliance. When we made the pledge uh, to invest 2% of GDP uh, in defence back uh, in um, 2014 at the NATO summit, only three allies met the mark. Today, 23 allies are investing at least 2% of GDP in defence, a record high number. This also brings the total defence spending of European allies and Canada above the 2% target. So we have delivered. Reports indicated that the Liberal government was still formulating a timeline to achieve this target. A government official noted that Prime Minister Justin Trudeau's administration 
would provide additional details on Thursday, the summit's closing day. Politico reported on July 10th that US Senator Roger Wicker raised concerns about Canada's defence spending during a meeting with Trudeau. Wicker indicated that Trudeau promised a timeline to reach the 2% target within a decade, though the Prime Minister's office did not confirm this claim. The newly committed funds for Ukraine will contribute towards meeting this spending goal, according to the government official. Ottawa has asserted that it will inevitably meet the target through planned acquisitions of military equipment, including up to 12 submarines, for which a procurement process was initiated on July 10th. <laughs>